Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is March the 28th, 2024. I want to welcome you to our broadcast. Please make sure that you are subscribed to our channel as uh, it does look like that YouTube takes our subscribers off. So please make sure that you are subscribed. We have some breaking news. This, I guess this you can call this an emergency alert. There's so much news that's coming in on an hourly basis. It does look like the Suwaki Corridor between Poland, Lithuania, Belarus is uh, heating up again. We have uh, news coming in that uh, unusual German NATO forces deploying in the area in Lithuania. Belarus uh, military forces are massing along the border area at Lithuania and Poland. So this could be a flashpoint uh, that will uh, bring us to the next phase of the war in Europe. Let's go ahead and read the article. Despite Russian President Putin's televised declaration yesterday that Russia has no plans to engage NATO, Belarus troops are now deploying by the thousands to the border area near Poland and Lithuania. German NATO troops are also deploying in Lithuania near that border area. Yesterday, Russian President Vladimir Putin was asked by television news reporters if Russia has plans to go after the Baltic states and elsewhere and is being widely reported by the news media in the West. The Russian president replied, what they say about us going to attack Europe after Ukraine is complete nonsense. The West has been scaring people with a Russian threat solely to funnel money to the military industrial complex the president explained intimidation of their own population solely to get money out of them out of their own people especially against the background of the fact that the economy is declining he's talking about in uh, europe and in america the standard of living is falling it is obvious putin said when further pressed on the issue by several other tv reporters the russian president gave a verbal list he said Russia has no intention of fighting NATO. He said falsifications about a possible attack on Poland, the Baltic states, and the Czech Republic are a way to deceive the populations of these countries. He did say that Russia will destroy the F-16s in Ukraine the same way it destroys Western tanks and other equipment. If F-16s are used against the Russian armed forces from airfields in third countries, like Poland or Romania, these airfields will become legitimate targets for the Russian Federation. The last item, number four, now seems to be the most likely flashpoint of an actual NATO-Russian conflict. NATO nations have donated many F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, but for all their capabilities in the air, the F-16s don't handle takeoffs and landings very well if they are forced to use bumpy runways all the airfields within Ukraine have been repeatedly hit by Russian weapons in the ongoing special military operation by Russia. The runways are not smooth at all, so F-16s cannot handle those runways very well, if at all. As such, the thinking inside NATO is that these donated F-16s might be allowed to take off from NATO bases in third countries like Poland and Romania launch attacks against the Russian army inside Ukraine and then fly back to those NATO bases for maintenance and refueling and arming. So I'm going to stop here and give you my opinion. I've been talking about this for a long time, probably about a year. I have told you that NATO is planning uh, to attack Russia directly. Uh, they have been building up their forces for over two years to do exactly this in Poland and Romania. Uh, according to the latest esti estimates, there are over 100,000 U.S. soldiers in Europe right now, in Poland, in Romania, in uh, uh, Lithuania, Finland, Sweden, all the countries that surround Russia. We have been planning this for a long time, folks. We have been slowly degrading the Russian military through Ukraine. Uh, we have allowed Ukraine to hit Russian infrastructure. We also allowed the a terrorist attack uh, to take place in Moscow at that music venue, the head of the S, I'm sorry, the FSB, uh, which is the uh, equivalent to the US FBI or the KGB, as you want to call it, stated yesterday that uh, they state unequivocally 
that the United States, the UK, and Ukraine are responsible for the terror attack that killed 140 of their people. Now, let me give you a scenario. What if there was a terror attack at a concert, let's say, of Lee Greenwood or one of our music stars? Um, I can't even think of any, uh, any top music stars today. Let's say um, uh, Beyonce or, you know, just one of our main music headline stars. Let's say that uh, there was a terrorist attack and the United States government found out that Russia, China, and Iran were behind the terror attack. What do you think Joe Biden would do, folks? If they had circumstantial evidence, they arrested 11 uh, people uh, in the United States right after, and they have the shooters, they have the people that they were connected to, and it all leads back to Russia, China, and Iran. What do you think that our country would do? Would we declare war on Russia, China, and Iran, or would we attack them? Well, folks, this is the same thing that happened in Russia. Russia arrested all of the perpetrators. They've got the four gunmen. They got at least 11 more people that they have arrested. They are connecting the dots. They are arresting more people daily. And they have conclusive evidence that our CIA, our Western intelligence agencies, the MI6, facilitated or at least had a hand in planning and making available uh, things that these terrorists could use to move freely and to do this attack. We had full knowledge of it because our State Department, John Kirby, they issued a warning to Americans in Moscow uh, weeks before this happened, telling them not to uh, to uh, visit any kind of uh, large gatherings. So we were aware of this terrorist attack before it happened. What happened? <clears throat> what would happen if this happened in our country and we found out it was Russia, China, Iran? So that's what's happened, folks. This is a critical uh, juncture that we have uh, entered into, uh, that Russia has concrete evidence that we were behind the attack and MI6 and the UK. So things are accelerating. I mean, um, uh, Russia has made the statement that they're going to hold everybody responsible. So I think the big battle is coming up this summer and going into winter. I think uh, uh, the prophecy of Philip Barnett could come true this November. He says in his prophecy that Russia would take the entire northern part of Ukraine, that means Kiev, all of the uh, territory. And once that happens, the United States would launch a surprise nuclear attack on Russia on November the 11th. He did not tell him the year, but things are accelerating. And we can see this uh, possibly could happen this November 11th. We also have breaking news that, uh, I mean, we're fixing to give... Uh, uh, the okay for F-16s to be used in Ukraine. Now, I've been telling you for a long time that Ukrainians are not going to be flying these F-16s, folks. I'm sorry, no matter what they're telling you. Our news media lies to us. CNN lies. Our government lies to us. The people that's going to be flying these F-16s and maintaining those are NATO soldiers, U.S. soldiers, French soldiers, uh, they're going to be NATO soldiers, folks. They're going to be using the bases of Poland, Romania, because they cannot land in Ukraine. The runways will not facilitate that. So Russia knows this, and they're already telling the world that once this happens, they will attack the bases in Romania, in Poland, whatever NATO bases are used for these F-16s to fly, and that's going to be major, massive escalation. Will the U.S. respond with a direct attack on Russia, with a tactical nuke, folks. Anything could happen. Things are heating up. I hope you're getting ready. But uh, let's continue reading this article. It says, of course, hypothetically, if F-16s took off inside from Poland or Romania, killed Russian troops in Ukraine, and then flew back to those bases, the Russians would hit those bases. They would have to, for self-defense, at the precise moment, Poland and Romania then could claim we have been attacked by Russia and try to invoke Article 5 of NATO Treaty. So, folks, you see how they're setting Russia up to attack them. The Biden administration, NATO, has been trying to provoke Russia for over two years to attack them directly so they would have an excuse to unleash hell on Russia. That's been their whole plan, and Putin has held back. You better be glad that President Vladimir Putin is the president of Russia and not a hardliner like Dmitry Medvedev, 
who would nuke America the next day, folks. There are hardliners in Russia. There are old Soviet hardliners, uh, neocons, that would not hesitate to use nuclear weapons on America in a heartbeat. But President Putin is a moderate. He does not want nuclear war. He has held back. He has been very, very patient in prosecuting this war. And if he is replaced, then we could get a hardliner like, like Dmitry Medvedev or one of these generals in Russia that would like nothing better than to obliterate the United States from off the face of the earth. So you better be glad that Putin is the leader and not one of these other uh, leaders in Russia because he is a moderate and he has a lot of patience and he has held back uh, from doing the unthinkable. So this is just one article, folks. Um, we had another article here uh, about uh, uh, a NATO general uh, from the Times. Let me read this. There was an op-ed in the uh, Times newspaper in London uh, has become the first Western mass media outlet to begin reporting the truth to the gullible pro-Ukrainian crowd. It is time to uh, talk about the fall of Kiev. The reality is finally being admitted by the Western news media that Kiev, Ukraine, will fall to Russia. The op-ed piece was published at 9 p.m. in London last night. The fact that it, uh, the fact it was even published at all is the big takeaway. The West must finally acknowledge what people like me have been telling them uh, from this conflict when it began. Ukraine cannot win against Russia. They don't even have a chance of winning. Having said that on this website and on my radio show, I was viciously criticized as a Russian shill and a Russian propagandist I let the criticism roll off my back and kept right on reporting the truth no matter who didn't like it. I also reported this, folks. People called me uh, a Russian uh, licker, uh, licking Putin's butt, uh, a Russian sympathist. No, folks, I've been telling you the truth for over two years, and a lot of people didn't want to listen to me. They kept screaming, Ukraine is winning, Ukraine is winning, Ukraine is winning. Uh, Putin's sick, Putin's dying of cancer, uh, blah, 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 blah. And it was all lies, folks. It was all lies. Our channel was one of the very few channels that had the balls to tell you the truth. And we're still telling you the truth. Last night, the Times of London admitted what's coming. And instead of admitting this was a fool's errand from the get-go, they hurled blame. So this is uh, uh, some from uh, the article last night. It says, it is time we talk about the fall of Kiev, far from being a frozen conflict. The nightmare scenario is edging in view because the West is failing to send arms. Wednesday, March the 27th, 2024, 9 p.m., the London Times. It is July and the Russian army is at the gates of Kiev. President Zelensky delivers an emergency broadcast to repeat his defiant words first uttered in February 2022 that he does not need a ride out of Ukraine. No, he needs ammunition to stay and fight the Russians. If only the West had listened and done more when the brave Ukrainians were pleading for help, it might have made the difference while the Allies squabbled and the United States eventually provided another $60 billion in aid. As spring turned into summer, Putin's troops broke through the lines in the south and the east. Retreating Ukrainian forces were uh, able to only slow the advance while, when the, while the Russians closed in on the capital. So this is just part of the uh, response from the Lime, uh, Times of London uh, stating that Ukraine will fall, Kiev will fall, and I believe this is true, folks. Putin is working his plan. They are about to launch their massive counteroffensive just in a month or so. When all of the land dries up in Ukraine and the heavy equipment, the heavy armor can roll again, Russia will mow them over like a lawnmower. They're going to mow the rest of the Ukrainian troops over. Ukraine is out of ammunition. Ukraine is out of manpower. According to a Polish general, there have been millions of people that have been wounded and killed. This was a Polish major general a couple of weeks ago. I published that information. He stated the true amount of deaths in Ukraine. He said it's in the millions, millions wounded, millions killed. He ought to know, folks, because they're in league with Ukraine. He actually told the truth. 
Zelensky said, oh, we've only lost 31,000. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Zelensky's a coke addict. He's a Nazi. And he has sacrificed his country. He has sacrificed his people for the United States of America. He is the United States of America's patsy, the puppet government. And he has killed his own people for money. For money, folks. What really ticks me off the most is there could have been peace in Ukraine in March of 2022. Right after the war started, there was a peace agreement. Russia and Ukraine sat down at the peace negotiating table. A peace treaty was uh, was drawn up. Russia signed their part. But Zelensky would not sign it because the United States and NATO sent Boris Johnson the prime minister of the UK at that time to, uh, to Ukraine uh, to break up the peace agreement, to scuttle the peace agreement. There could have been peace, folks. There could have been peace. The war would have been over two years ago. But our country, the United States, NATO did not want the war to be over. We wanted to continue the war, folks. So you can blame Russia all you want. You can blame them. But it is our country who scuttled the peace agreement. Do you realize that? We did. We don't want peace. We want war. We want destruction around the world. So that is what we're going to read. You know, I'm an American. I'm a patriot. I am not a traitor. I love our country. I love America. I don't want our country destroyed. Do you think I'm stupid? Do you think I'm crazy? You think I want to see my country obliterated and invaded? You would have to be a fool to want that. What I don't agree with is our country using our military power to go around the world and cause destruction just because we can, folks. We are the bully of the world, and the world has gotten tired of it. We have run Europe. Do you know that this war in Ukraine has run Europe? We have run Europe. Europe's economy is in the toilet right now. Do you know that? Germany's factories are being uh, shut down because they have no energy. We have hurt their economy. All because of this war. All because of the hate that we want to destroy Russia. Folks, hate will destroy you. Hate will destroy you. Instead of getting along, instead of saying, yay, we have a peace treaty. Oh, they're going to sign peace. All Russia wanted, folks, was to live in peace. All they wanted. That's all any person in the, in the entire world wants. You can ask anybody in the entire world, what do you want? You want to live in peace or do you want your family killed? You want your, your country destroyed? I would say 99% of the people in the world say that they would want to live in peace with one another. They don't want war. But we do. Our country wants war. We've started more wars around the world than any other country, folks, in the last 30 years. We destroyed Iraq. We destroyed Libya. Well, we tried to destroy Syria. So it's all coming back to bite us in the ass. I'm sorry. I love our country, but I don't agree with our government. I don't agree with our foreign policy. You know, I'm not anti-government, no matter what anybody says. We need a government, folks. We need a legitimate government. We need a government for the people, by the people, to look out for the people, to take care of our population, to take care of the poor and the elderly and the widow. We need a government that is for the population. But unfortunately, there are a few in our government that have their own agenda. They're using our military power. They're using our economic power to destroy nations around the world. I don't agree with that. That's not being anti-government. That's being uh, just uh, realistic. Why can't our government just take care of our nation, folks? Why can't we rebuild our bridges and our highways and our airports and help the veterans? Help the veterans that have served in our military. Take care of them. Take care of the widow. Help the people in our own country. Instead of sending hundreds of billions of dollars around the world to start more wars and to keep them going, folks. That's all I'm saying. I love our country. I am a patriot. I'm from a large military family. I support the American people, but I don't support uh, our government that has uh, went around the world starting all of these wars. And I hope you don't either. You know, time is growing short. You know, so many things are happening I do believe that there's uh, there's going to be escalation 
uh, coming up. Uh, let's see if we can get to some more articles here. You know, I hate to rant and rage, but, um, you know, this is the breaking news. Washington turns to Ankara, Turkey, to ramp up shell production for Bloomberg. Uh, so, Receipt Erdogan, this guy right here, this guy right here is a snake, folks. He'll smile at your face and he'll stab you in the back as soon as you turn your back on him. Erdogan is uh, playing the fence. One minute, he's allied with Russia. The next minute, he's allied with, uh, with Iran. The next minute, he's allied with the United States of America. This guy's a snake. He stab you in the back as soon as you turn your back on him. And uh, I don't think he can be trusted. And according to information coming in from yesterday, he was, uh, his country uh, harbored the terrorist and trained some of the terrorists in his country for that attack in Moscow. So according to this latest report, the United States is planning on buying ammunition uh, from Turkey to send to Ukraine. So, folks, this is just breaking news. We're going to just go through this. NATO general warns of the Russian trap in Ukraine. There are no good options for Kiev. A retired French general has said Moscow forces uh, has forced Kiev to choose between losing men or territory, according to a uh, retired French General Jerome uh, Pellistrandi, the editor-in-chief of the Revenue uh, Nation, or Nationale. So that is just one article here. Uh, this is also breaking news. Russian warships uh, enter Red Sea as uh, rival U.S.-led coalition patrols. Uh, so we do have a breaking news that um, a couple Russian warships have entered the Red Sea area on patrol. Um, this has just happened today. The Russian Navy's Pacific Fleet has confirmed that it sent several of its warships through the Baal of uh, Madab Strait into the Red Sea. At a moment, Houthi attacks against international shipping is ongoing. So we don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they're just there to show their presence. Let's keep on going with some articles. This is more breaking news. Moscow, the terrorists who were paid, uh, were paid, um, terrorists were paid by Ukrainians with cryptocurrency. Arrest in Tajikistan, the FSB orchestrated by the U.S., Britain, and Ukraine. So this is just more news coming out that the, uh, the four gunmen were paid with cryptocurrency by Ukrainians. Rus Russia's investigative committee said it had discovered evidence showing the gunmen who killed more than 140 people on Friday's attack on the concert hall in Moscow were linked to the Ukrainian neo-Nazis and specifically were funded uh, were funding the terrorists. In a station, in a statement, the commission said that the perpetrators of the attack had received large amounts of cash and cryptocurrencies from Ukraine, while a cryptocurrency expert who acted as a middleman has been arrested. So these are the four gunmen that were arrested, folks. This is unprecedented that Russia has arrested everybody involved in this terrorist attack. So they have everybody. They can question everybody. They know who is behind it, and that is what has happened. So let's keep on going. Uh, we do have more, more information. Direct threat for the first time from President Putin to strike airports of NATO countries if they are used by Ukrainian F-16s. So this is Putin, and he did threaten a further escalation. Said a further escalation of the tension between Russia and NATO, and especially the United States, is the warning expressed for the first time by President of Russian Federation Vla uh, Vladimir Putin. The airports of the third countries from which fighters will operate will be considered legitimate targets, F-16s against the Russian Air Force. So we talked about this earlier. If NATO does use these F-16s against Russia and goes back to Romania or Poland or Lithuania, then Russia said they have the right to bomb those airports. This is also breaking news. The French are preparing a scenario of trench warfare with the Russians. In Odessa, they dream of returning to 19. 
14. So this is just more breaking news that the French could send forces to Ukraine. More breaking news. Putin slams allegations about Russia's plan to invade Europe as utter nonsense. The Russian president noted that this narrative unfolds amid slumping economy and deteriorating living standards in Europe. Russian President Vladimir Putin has slammed allegations that Russia is planning to fight against Europe as utter nonsense. As far as the allegations that we are planning to invade Europe after Ukraine, this is utter nonsense meant solely to intimidate their population and to make them pay more money. So I'm not going to read these articles. We are running out of time. I only have like 30 minutes on this phone to record uh, all of this information. Russia is building a railway, though, between uh, mainline Russia and Crimea. This is breaking news. By the end of the year, the railway line connecting Russia with Crimea will be completed. Moscow will have an alternate supply route to the Kerch Bridge. Now, Ukraine has been trying to destroy the Crimean Bridge, the Kerch Bridge, for over two years. Russia has solved that problem by building a new multi-rail rail line from parts of Russia into Crimea. So if they do bomb the Crimean Bridge and take it out, Russia has a second rail line here to supply, resupply Crimea with troops uh, and armor and everything that they need. So this is breaking news. I will not read the article, but uh, this is the headlines coming in that Russia has a plan B for what is going on. Uh, we also have breaking news, a gift from London to the Ukrainians, Romanians, and Poles. Shells with depleted uranium have exploded in Kimnitsky. So Russia did destroy a huge uh, warehouse in Ukraine that contained a lot of these depleted uranium shells uh, meant for the tanks. And uh, it seems like that Russia does have uh, a lot of intelligence now about uh where this is going. But this is the article that I was talking about, folks. Ukraine's losses in the millions, retired Polish general. Kiev does not have the resources or manpower to continue the fight against Russia. Uh, Ram Nud Andrzej has said. So this general right here, this is a Polish general, very high ranking. He said Ukraine's losses in the conflict with Russia should be counted in the millions. The former chief of the Polish general staff, uh, uh, Ramud Andrzej Zek, has claimed Kiev is losing the war and does not have the resources to sustain the fight against Moscow. So folks, this general right here, he's telling you the truth. Zelensky said they've only lost 31,000. This man right here, who knows what's going on. He was the head of the Polish forces. He said that Ukraine's losses are in the millions. So, folks, they've been lying to you. They've been lying to you. The propaganda of Europe, the propaganda of, uh, of the NATO countries have been lying. This gen gentleman right here has told you the truth, that the losses are colossal. The losses are colossal. So, this is the breaking news uh, this is another picture of the general right here, the Polish general who spilled the beans on the true losses. Folks, he said it's in the millions. Polish chief of the general staff, over one million men, the losses of the Ukrainians in the war. So folks, this is the truth. We're one of the very few uh, YouTube channels, news channels, war channels that give you the accurate truth. And things are accelerating in the world. Do you know Jesus Christ? It does look like there's going to be a major, major escalation uh, in Europe. I do think that this Moscow uh, terror attack was a false flag. But I think in the coming months, I think that NATO is going to try something very stupid. I think that this war could at any moment go nuclear. It could. Russia is making headway. They are moving toward uh, Kiev, Odessa, Kharkov. That is their goal for this summer. And will this evolve into a nuclear war? It could very likely. So do you know Jesus Christ? Because if the worst case scenario happens, if we are attacked with an EMP, if our power goes out, if something happens to our country, what are you going to do? 
We need to be make sure that our life is secure with our God, our Creator. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you do not know Jesus, repent of your sins. Get the sin out of your life. And if you do not know that if you died today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure if you will say this prayer, Jesus Christ will save you right now, wherever you are. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood and you rose again the third day. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again, folks. But let's get uh, let's get with the program, you know. Let's walk in love. If you call yourself a Christian, let's be nice to each other. Let's be kind to each other. Let's forgive each other as Jesus Christ told us to do. Folks, don't hold grudges. Don't be mad at your neighbor. Forgive them. Give it over to God. Jesus said, if you do not forgive others, I will not forgive you. That's in our Bible, Matthew 24, folks. It's in there. Love one another. Do good to others. And walk in the love that Jesus told us to walk in. So thank you for watching our video today. Please share our videos out. Please make sure that you're subscribed. And if God leads you, please consider supporting our channel. We do need your support. God bless you. We do love you. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.